So I was 18 when I found out that I was pregnant with Penelope. I suppose at that time I thought I was quite grown up and really prepared for to have a baby. And it was quite an enjoyable pregnancy until my 20 week scan when they found out that Penelope had choroid plexus cysts on her brain and we were told that it could possibly mean that she has Edward syndrome but because I was so young um, and because it was there was no other markers for Edward syndrome they said it was very unlikely that it would be it. So Penelope's birth was really, really traumatic um, with me being so young as well. I think it was really scary. Obviously never been through labour or birth before. So my waters broke the day after my due date. Um, I was in labour for 30 hours and it had to be accelerated because I wasn't progressing enough myself. Um, my mum and my husband were with me the whole time. And all of a sudden then she was born she came out, she wasn't breathing, and they took her away. They brought in a load of doctors. They took her away to the other side of the room and tried to resuscitate her, which I'm glad now I didn't have the amnio to confirm the diagnosis because they wouldn't have done that otherwise. Um, they passed her over to me for a couple of minutes just to see her before they rushed her away to the neonatal intensive care unit. Um, I wasn't able to see her for about four or five hours after the birth and a consultant came and spoke to me and my husband and told us after her phys physical examination what they had found and that they suspected Edward syndrome um, and wanted me to give my consent so that they could do genetic testing just to confirm. Life with Penelope was quite difficult. A new baby already changes the dynamic of any relationship, never mind a baby with complex needs. Um, we still had all the normal baby stuff. We had the crying, the colic, the teething, the sleepless nights. And the only real different thing at that stage was that she was tube fed. We had lots and lots and lots of appointments from the very beginning of Penelope's life. Every single week, we would have different health professionals coming out to the house to check on her. And sometimes it felt like our house was more of a, of a hospital than a home because we had so much medical equipment and so many different nurses and physiotherapists and everything else coming in to help care for her. Um, Penelope absolutely loved life. She had the most mischievous little smile. She loved being the centre of attention and if she wasn't, she made sure that you knew about it. Um, she loved me and she loved her daddy. She loved any form of interaction from us. She loved her dog, Francis, and she used to laugh at him every single day. Um, she loved lights because she was deaf. She gravitated so much more towards the lights. And we decided to start building up our own little sensory room of lights for her in the house. She loved, she loved swimming, so we took her to the hydrotherapy pool as much as we could. She loved a bouncy chair that her granny got her and she soon worked out how to make the toys move um, by themselves and she just absolutely loved it. So Penelope uh, took really sick at the start of December. Um, she had a chest infection but we she hadn't been in hospital for a year. I had dry antibiotics in the house so I made her one up and started her on a course of them and to be honest, we didn't really think she was that sick. I mean, our oxygen saturations were keeping quite high on quite a low amount of oxygen. But all of a sudden, on the 2nd of December, she just crashed at home. Her saturations plummeted. Her body started to reject food and water. So we rushed her up to the hospital because I couldn't provide her any more oxygen at home. And there was nothing else I could do for her at home. Um, so we were in a &E, and just before she got moved to the ward, her saturations dipped severely. They, she was really struggling to breathe by herself and loads of doctors flooded in. Um, they wanted just to take her to a side room 
and let her pass away. They didn't want to, to even try and treat her, but um, I fought and they took her up to the paediatric intensive care unit. And she seemed to settle for a bit. Um, and the next day then, I don't know what happened. She just completely crashed. I don't know how me and my husband survived it at all. Um, it really nearly did break us. It was very hard. We were having a lot of arguments. We were both grieving in very different ways. Um, and we were both really, really, really angry. We weren't angry at each other, but we were angry at the world and what it had threw at us and why it was us that had to lose a child. Um, because you never think it's going to happen to you, ever. Um, I suppose what I find helpful was finding other people who have been through it because nobody understands until you've been through it and you don't want anybody to experience it. But having somebody to talk to that knows how you're feeling exactly was the most precious thing ever to me because I felt like I could open up and be myself around them even if I did have to put on a big brave face to everybody else. Take the time that you need to do your research. Find other families who have been through it and who have living kids or had children with Edwards syndrome who lived for quite a while um, and just see what the best thing is for you to do. The most important thing is that you do what is right for you and for your family and you shouldn't feel forced or pushed into any decision from anybody. Also, um, Soft UK is a charity for people who and families who are affected by trisomy 13 and trisomy 18 and I actually volunteer with them. I am a peer support volunteer and we offer a helpline that families of any description, mum, dad, sisters, brothers, grannies who can ring and speak to us and have somebody there to listen. Since Penelope passed away, I, we have had two more kids, Stella who is three and Elsie who is one. And they brought so much light it's during such a dark and painful time. They are the reason I get up every single morning. And Stella is at an age now that she can say Penelope and she started drawing family pictures of all of us which she includes Penelope in and that is so special to us because we want them to know how amazing their big sister was and how amazing she did. We celebrate Penelope's birthday every single year as if she was still here. We buy a birthday cake and we blow out candles and we visit her grave and put balloons up and put new flowers out. Um, it's really important for me that nobody forgets Penelope because she made such an impact on so many people and I will continue to talk about her to everybody. I always tell people I have three kids. If they ask, I'll never say I have two because she still was here. She still was alive, whether she is here now or not. If I was to find out I was pregnant again and it was the same situation, I would go through it all a hundred times just for the time that we had with Penelope. Penelope may have died but she also lived and they are both as equally important to acknowledge.